Welcome to the J Spot, and these are my beauties. Bought this car bike in uh, 2012 from a guy in uh, Mosfiloti, Marios, a friend of me. I found that car uh, for sale in uh, in a page in a site I don't remember where. And uh, I had an Evo 7 back then. I put the Evo immediately for sale, and then after I sold the Evo, I bought the A86 because it was my dream car when I was young. Uh, I met that car for the first time in 2006 in Greece, some uh, drift, uh, on a drift round. Uh, it was the first time that I saw an A86. I searched in Google for that car and uh, I, re I realized that I'm in love with this. So I had to buy it. We started the recondition in 2012. At first we said that we will give about um, 20 grand to rebuild the car, fully rebuild the car. At 20 grand, we realized that we just done the half of the job that we need to do. So we started to again to make a new program and to finish our recondition. When we bought the car, uh, the color was silver. We changed all the color inside and outside. All the parts are new from Toyota dealership, uh, from Japan, and some parts uh, are bought from um, Michalis, uh, an owner with an S2000 swap uh, A86. And uh, after five, five and a half years, we were able to be back in the streets. And so it took you five, five and a half years to get back in the streets. As we know, you've, and many of our viewers know as well, you've always been heavily into auto styling, modified cars. What was it that really kept you passionate about it through the good times and the bad? I always wanted to be something different. I was buying cars that uh, not a lot of guys were, were, were buying in that time. I had a lot of Hondas, okay, everyone loves Hondas. And uh, I had an EK9, an G6, original G6. I had three Altezas. I had a lot of, most, all of my cars, my previous cars were Japanese. But uh, A86 is something different. It's something that uh, rare, especially in Cyprus and a lot of other islands, as I know. And uh, it's something that I think as the, as the, the year passed, uh, nothing will be different with this car. The price will go on and uh, I really like it. It's something different from the other cars. What was it that really pushed you to, towards the show and shine and restoring it so much than to have a car that's more of a track car or more of a car that you drive on the street? I was never a track guy. I like a lot to be in the track, to see cars running. Um, I tracked my Evo two or three times back in 2011 when I had my Evo. But uh, when I started this uh, recondition, after the, the money that we spent, we, at first we said, okay, the car will be sometimes track for track days, for a weekend ride, for, uh, for some fast rides or something. Uh, but after that, after you give so much love in a, in a car, you see that if something goes wrong, you will never have your, back, your car back, especially in an A86 that is so difficult to find another one. 
Uh, if we start from the from the flares uh, from the rear, they are fully custom. They cost a lot of money and uh, they are um, they are made from steel from other cars. Front ones are from uh, Volkswagen Golf 2 and rear ones are from Austin Metro. So imagine if something goes wrong, even in the truck or something. I know this is a, this is a mistake because you have to to drive your car, you have to have to enjoy your car, you have to to have good time with your car. But in my mind, because I gave the money and I needed six years to make it from the start, I think it's not the car that I'm going to track, but just to have it in my shop. I barely drive it in Limassol, maybe just for a photo shoot or just for a small drive. I love it and I'm coming back to the shop. I have it here all day. Yeah, I mean, as, as people can see in the video, guys, if you look up above Nicolas' head, you can see the factory OEM bumper that came with this car. And at a, at a quick look, the A86 looks it looks factory from a distance, but I think with everything that we've gone through, we can very much tell how far away you've taken it from the factory while yeah. still keeping it very tasteful. The next question about your current daily driver, your NB Mazda MX-5. Yeah. <laughs> how many MX-5s, what is this, the third one? The, the third one, one, yeah. The third one. And tell us a little bit about the MX-5. Why you decided to go back to the MX-5 Tell us a little bit about the process of when you bought it. When you I bought my first it. MX-5 when I was 18 years old. I fell in love with it. I was young. I was um, so surprised about the car, about rear wheel drive cars. I had an Alteza before, an, uh, before the MX-5, but uh, because, because of the lightweight of the car, uh, I was so surprised about Miata's. They are just 1.6 liters, not so big horsepower or something, but they are um, true fun cars to drive, especially on mountains or whatever you can do. After I sell my, fair, my first uh, Miata, I bought, wait, this is the fourth Miata of me. I just remember <laughs> yes. because I had, I, had, yeah, I had a black one when I was 18 years old, Back in 2010, I bought a white one, MK 2.5, from a, um, a friend of me, and the car was 2005 year. It was just five years old. It was like new. I had it for three months, and I sell it just for uh, because I found my Evo, and I wanted the Evo so bad. So I sell it after three months. I had the Evo, and then after four or five years when I had the K9, a lot of other cars. Guys, this gives you a little bit of an idea how many cars Nicolas has when he forgets an MX-5 amongst the other cars. Yeah, after a lot of years, I bought another uh, grey Miata, 2004 year. In 2016, I bought it. I had it till November and uh, then I found out the red one. I'm in love with the red one, the red color. And then I wasn't sure if I'm going to sell the gray one or not because I was in love with it. But then I realized that my brother needed one uh, Miata, so I gave the gray one to my brother and that's why I fully refurbished the, the red one and we changed everything with my mechanic in Nicosia. We changed everything in the car. The hood uh, engine was fully, almost fully restored. And uh, we have now suspension, wheels, tires, um, body kit and everything fitted on it. I'm in love with this car. And with that Miata, I'm making whatever I'm not making with this. All right, Nicolas, so I think the only question left to ask is, after 10 years, after so many different cars, the Miata that you're happy with is a daily, the A86, that maybe if the right offer comes along, you'll let it go. What could possibly be next? Well, if the right offer comes in, maybe you will see a red Supra MK4 beside me. 
always red though, right? Yeah. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell. We'll catch you again next week. Peace. Whoa.